die when you meet God. Not, I'm off to see Lucifer, mate. Not, not oh, well, yeah. you will. How do you know? Yeah, oh, just do it. What a pound donation. No, 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 no. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, see you later. Yeah, yeah, you too. Have a nice day, yeah? Thank you. Watch me pull off. Yeah, 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 Already uh, being received freely by one person, extract from the Bible, New Testament, offered to you quite freely. Yours simply for the taking. Who knows? But maybe you too have done. And uh, well, the way to get rid of them is to uh, read God's word, see what He has to say. Because he has spoken fully, finally, and we have his word written down, black and white, in the English language, for you to read, divulge, understand, and of course, put your trust and faith in the Son of God, the only begotten, the came full of grace and truth. Word of God offered to you, yours simply. For the taking, the right one, come and ask for one. So the Lord God Bible, that's where we, this is where we start, don't you know? It's the starting point and it's the finishing point, you know? Without it, doesn't matter what you do, politics, you know, science, uh, philosophy, mathematics, it doesn't matter, you know, what your discipline is. If you don't start with the Word of God, the Bible I mean, and finish with it, well, you're wrong all the way through. It don't matter, you see, if you haven't got God's Word in the foundation, you know? Uh, underneath, you know, the, the solid rock of God's Word, that's... Well, that's what your nation needs, you know, that's why. You might have noticed, sir, did you, that the nation is kind of like, uh, you know, out of sync. Before you feet, when you see the law flowing, you feel the heat, like the sun, you feel the heat from the floor, the law, that's where I lose Yeah, well, that, that's where you're going, sir. That's where, well, that's, but that, that's why I'm here to turn you, repent, repent and believe the gospel, sir, don't have to go there, so you see some people seem quite content, you know, being hell bent, you know, like that gentleman there, but it's very sad, it's not what we're here for, you know, turn people away from such a way, but like I was saying, you know, unless you got the solid rock, I mean, can't you see it in your own nation today? You know, politics and meltdown. That don't surprise me. Why, why, why is that, you know? You, you might say, well, not been like that before. Why is it like that now? Because of your departure from God. Because you're a nation departed from, you know, apostate from God. I said, you see, the, the issues, the entirety of society, drug infestation, heathen religion, you know, you live in a broken society. Why? Because there's a spiritual factor underlying it all, your abandonment from God. 
That's the cause. And what you see, the effect is well, your nation, uh, just as you see it today, broke, you know, broke. And I tell you, all the king's horses, all the king's men cannot put, not Humpty, cannot put Britain back together again. There's only one way back for the nation, and that's by God through his son, Jesus Christ. No other way. All the wicked and all the nations that forget God, hell, hell, friends. That's, the, that's the, the final destination for every nation, every person who forgets, neglects God. But the Bible, you see, God's instruction manual, and you could, well, you could uh, divide it into two parts, you know? The knowledge of God and the knowledge of yourself, sir. For one is necessary for the other. You need a knowledge of yourself in order to come to a knowledge of God. So what is yourself? Well, the true knowledge of yourself is that you're a sinner who has come short of the glory of God. The true self, you know, not, not the one, not, not the dude, not the cool dude that you see in the mirror, you know. You know, the makeup plastered on, you know, and the, uh, just out the hairdresser. You know, with the uh, uh, Gucci and Armani, you know, dripping from your body. I don't mean that one. I mean, I mean the inside, the heart. The heart, God says, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Continually and only evil, continually is the heart of man. That's God's testimony. And it's why you see that you come to see and know and understand and realize that's that's the true self, that's your true self. Well, then you begin to see, you begin to understand, in some measure, at least anyway, of your need of your maker of getting back to and getting right with him. And he's provided the way. He's gone out of his way to provide you with the way back to himself in sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world, die on a cross, suffer, bleed and die, rise mighty from the grave, so that you might be justified before God, right with God, and uh, that through faith, through trusting, in his name. There's no other way, you see. God has appointed, God has ordained the way, and there is no other. Not through your religiosity or anybody else's. Watch our society, Islam, Romanism, and all the others, all 9,900 of them, no salvation, any other name but that of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I commend him to you. He's a wonderful Savior. He did save after all my body and I, and if he can save us, believe me, he can save just about any. How you doing, my dear? Have a good day. Come and talk to us. So there you go, friends. You see, it's not too... I mean, you might say, well, what about the Ten Commandments? We've been speaking about them these last day, days or two, you know, and, uh, and they're very important, you see. God has given us his law, his commandments, not to justify us, not to make us right, but of course they do have an effect, you know. And they're given to us to instruct us, you know, as to be absolute and utter holiness of God. This is the one that you have to do. He's, he's the one you're going to meet. The minute you breathe your last, sir, he's the, next, the next, next person that you meet. A holy, so holy, I tell you, the very, the very sight of his holiness, I tell you, will melt you like lava. You know? So that's what God's commandments, you know, the Ten Commandments, you've heard them. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet, and so on. Give it, you see, to instruct you. Because that, that's, 
That's the standard of God's holiness, you know? And that's the standard by which God's going to judge you and I. You know, not, not, by, not by your family standards, not by the nation standards. That is not what, not what Mrs. May says, Mr. Cameron, any one of these arrogant uh, politicians. What they say is of no account. Not even your opinion or mine counts. God will judge you by his holy standard, his holy law, because he's a holy God and that's what he gave you his commandments for, to teach you how awesomely holy he shines with holiness. Everything about him is holy. His love is holy. Not that emotional guff that you get out of Hollywood on your internet and TV screens. That's not love. That's not love. That's just guff. That's just emotional nonsense. God's not emotional, you know? He, his love is holy, his wrath is holy. Everything about him shines with pristine holiness. That's what the commandments were given for. Teach you what God is like. But also those commandments are given to teach you, you know, that your sin, you know, it's not just, whoops, I made a mistake. Uh, whoops, I got that wrong, you know. Well, hey, come on, we all do things wrong. I mean, to err, to be human is to err, isn't it? Isn't that how the saying goes? You know, that, that's, <laughs> that's not your sin. Commandments are given to teach you the utter depravity, the utter impotence, and the utter ab abomination. I actually had a young woman up in Hanley Duck uh, just last week, uh, yesterday, sorry, uh, telling me that her sins were, that she herself was an abomination. Uh, you don't hear that very often in Staffordshire these days. Well, anywhere in the world. Uh, uh, she was treating it rather lightly, you know. Uh, but she was right an abomination before God, but that's what you and your sin is. That's what you and your sin, not just your sin, but you yourself. His wrath is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold down, hold back, hold under the truth, the truth of the knowledge of God because of your apostasy from God, abandonment of God. So you see, friends, uh, that's what the commandments were given for. So, well, you might say in turn, well, okay, we'll do the commandments. Let's get the good book out. Let's teach the commandments again in school. Let's all learn them off by heart, up one side and down the other. And we'll live by those commandments. Oh, whoa, what the, what, what, that you could. Oh, that you could. But the carnal mind is enmity against God. Hates God. That's what you are, you see. God haters. That's how we're born. That's how we're conceived and born into this world. With enmity in our hearts against God. Not subject to the law of God, neither can we be. So, oh, you see, you're in trouble. Even did you know, and here's the thing, you don't even know them. What are the Ten Commandments? Shall we have a test? Shall we have an exam in Stafford this afternoon? See how many people know the Ten Commandments? Do you know what they are? The Ten Commandments, how many of them do you think you could quote? Huh? Come on, ladies, tell me, what are the Ten Commandments? Tell me, what's the first one? Somebody tell me, the, what's the first one? What's the first commandment? No? See, see what I mean? Don't even know the first one. First one is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So, you see what I mean? You don't even know them. So, not knowing them, you can't keep them. And even if you did know them, you still couldn't keep them. Here's God's word for you today. This is what the Bible says. 
For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Get it? For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. The question is, is there a man, is there one person on the whole planet earth that is able perfectly to keep God's commandment? That's your question for you in Stafford today. Is there a man, is there a person on the whole planet earth who is able, who has the ability to keep God's commandments perfectly? Well, the short answer is no. That's the short answer, no. Because, why? Well, as the Bible says, for there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. There is none righteous, none that doeth good. No, not one, says God. For no one has the power, the power to be obedient to God, the power to obey God, His law, His commandments, whichever one you choose, any one you like. Thou shalt not commit adultery, ever had a lustful thought, you know, in your mind against the opposite sex, maybe, you know, uh, <laughs> these days the same sex. Uh, so you see that lust in your heart, you know, and you haven't got the power to dismiss it. Doesn't it control people's lives, you know? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Every time you've been angry with somebody, Jesus says, with your neighbor, you've been guilty of murder. Because that's where murder begins, in the heart, anger and rage against your neighbor. Ever been involved in road rage? Ever been burning in your heart because somebody cut you off on the motorway? You've been guilty of murder, Jesus said. Heart murder, you see? But well, friends, that's common to us all because, you see, that's the flesh life. That's the flesh nature in which you were conceived and born. And why you need to be born again, as Jesus said. That nature, that heart, that flesh life has to be nailed to the cross of Jesus. You have to be reborn, remade, made a new creature in Jesus Christ. The heart circumcised, the flesh life cut away, the evil cut away. Heart surgery is what's needed. Religion, you see, is just sticking a plaster on it. Psychology is just sticking a plaster on it. Friends, it's heart surgery that you need. Because none has the power. None has the power, none has the ability to keep God's commandments. Not the best, not the worst of men. None have that power. We have all of us fallen short of the glorious standard that God has instituted and God requires of us all. Utter perfection is what's required. And without it, well, without it, you fall short of a relationship with God, a relationship, uh, well, not just with God here in time on planet Earth, but, well, heaven. Heaven's door is closed to you without perfection. Well, you see, if there's no man perfect, none with the power to keep God's commandments, how on earth then is anybody ever going to get to heaven? Well, through the perfections of another, through the righteousness of another, through the righteousness of the Son of God, who's presented to you in the gospel, Jesus, who lived that blameless life, the life that you should have lived but cannot, the life that he lived, perfection, qualifying him for that death on the cross to pay the price for our sins, that you might be credited to your account, his obedience, his righteousness becomes yours through faith in his name. So no power, you see, 
There is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. No one, no one perfect. The depravity of man, heart deceitful above all things, Brother, desperately wicked. There is only one Messiah. Oh, Jesus. I, I, you, no. I, I am the Messiah. That's idolatry, sir. That's, bla that's blasphemous idolatry, sir. You go to hell for that, sir. You go to hell for that, sir. Blasphemous idolatry, sir. Not funny. You're not funny. No. That's sad. That's sad. But that, that the, the, the young man, you see, just, uh, well, he, he just pointed out, you know, the idol of the age. I, me, 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 I'm God. I'm my own God, you know? The God of self. It's wickedness is evil. It's evil of the heart, you know? The God of selfie, you know? Self, self, self. I'm my own God, you know? The world, the universe was made for me. I, 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 I. The central letter of the word sin is I. The God of self. That's your God today in your modern Western technological contemporary scientific society that's so broken, so emaciated with sin, so utterly depraved, the prophet in the Old Testament says, from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, utterly and thoroughly and absolutely shot through with sin, with evil, with wickedness, with enmity against God, against your maker, against your best good, the one who would do you the best good, save you from your depravity, your disobedience, and bring you to a knowledge of his forgiveness, his love, his covenant of grace. But you're not, not Stafford, not yet. You're not ready for that yet. You're a long, long way from that. But maybe, who knows, in hearing, hearing the gospel, Perhaps maybe that will be the start for somebody. But there is not a just man upon earth, says God, that doeth good and sinneth not. Not one. The depravity is total. Not even, not even the man or woman who has been born again. As Jesus says, you must be, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. But even the man, the woman, who has been born again, who has eternal life in their soul, is in the right relationship with God. Not even he or she is able to keep perfectly God's commandment. No, the best, the holiest of men and women, there is still remaining sin with them. We're not done with sin until that moment when we die. But of course, for the person who has been born again, the person who has been forgiven, their sins pardoned, justified freely by the grace of God, they have the assurance that when they die, they are indeed finished with sin forever in the glory of God's heaven, but of course if you die unregenerate, never had been born again as one bishop of the Church of England, and you ask yourself, could anything ever good come out of a bishop of the Church of England? You say, surely not. Yes, once, once upon a time in the city of Liverpool, he said, if you are not born again, the day will come when you will wish you had never, never been born at all. So you see, friends, if, if the regenerate, if the man or woman who is genuinely a Christian has been reborn and cannot keep perfectly the commandments of God, 
then what hope have you in your ungodliness and unrighteousness? And when you die, you will not be finished with your sin. Oh, no. Then comes the judgment. It is appointed unto man once to die. After that comes the judgment. Oh, dear friends, that ought to make you tremble. Not here to scare you, as some people accuse us sometimes of. No, 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 I wish I could. I wish I had that power, but I don't. I don't. But it ought to make you tremble. You ought to fear his name, because one day he's going to bring you to judgment for your sin. So there's not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. There is none that doeth good. You know, you break God's commandments in your thinking. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Because you have unrighteous thoughts all the time. You're thinking, unless your mind has been renewed by the power of God, your thoughts, your thinking is sinful. You break God's commandments in your thoughts every moment of every day. There's not, a, there's not an hour, there's not five minutes goes by in any day, you must say, in any day at all that you do not sin with your mind, with your thoughts. Thoughts again God, thoughts again your neighbor. That's the sum of God's commandments. Loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself and all. But when you don't love God in your mind, love God in your thoughts, well then you're sinning. And love your neighbor in your thoughts, you're, you're sinning. You're breaking God's commandments with your mind, with your thoughts, and that's why God says, the unrighteous thoughts have to go. Repentance, the Bible calls it. It's a turn of mind. It's a change of mind. Change of worldview. You know, seeing. Seeing the world, the universe that God has made. You know, as being His, not yours. For Him and not for you. Not for your glory, but for His. So there's not a just man. There's nobody in their minds, not the best of men or women. There is not a just man in all, upon all the earth that does not sin with their minds, in their thoughts. Even I dare say, as you're passing by here today, hearing the gospel being proclaimed, I don't doubt for a moment the one after another as you go by, you sin evilly, evilly, wickedly with your mind. You might not say anything, you might not speak it, but it's there in your mind. Acknowledge it, repent of it, turn from it, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. But then you break you break God's commandments in your words, in your speech. I hear it from the youngest and the oldest. Some of the things I hear coming out of the mouths of your children ought to cover your parents and grandparents with shame, utter shame. All oh, the things that we hear as the gospel is declared in Stafford today, men and women breaking God's commandments, how many times have you used the name of Jesus? God's name himself. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. With your words, with your speech. Blasphemous, young, young man, just going past just a moment or two ago. Uttering with his words, with his mouth, the most blasphemous thoughts. You see, friends, you break God's commandments continually, all the time, with your minds, with your words, and then, of course, with your deeds. Out of the heart, says Jesus, proceedeth evil thoughts that turn into evil actions. 
That's where, that's where the actions come from, don't you know? You think the evil, then you do the evil. You lie in your bed plotting the evil, plotting the adultery, plotting the theft. And then the next day, you rise from your beds and you turn the thoughts into actions and break God's commandments again. So you see in every which way, contrary to those commandments of God, there's not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. All sin in their mind, with their God-given mind, with their speech and with their actions. Even, even you take, I tell you, the good gifts that God gives you and you use them to berate the one who gave you the good gifts. That's gratitude, isn't it? That's gratitude, isn't it? The one thing that God requires of you, gratitude, thankfulness for all the goodness, all the goodness, he bestows upon you, but yet you take all those good gifts and you use them to berate, to work against your Creator, your Judge, and the one who would be, the one who would even be your Redeemer, who goes to such lengths as to send His only begotten Son into the world and has him by his own counsel nailed to a cross, dead and buried and raised again by the power of God from the grave so that you might be saved from your wicked deeds against God because it's against God that you sin ultimately. So you see, there's not a just man upon earth. There's, there's no one, there's not one single person with the power, with the ability to keep, to obey God's commandments perfectly. For then if the righteous, oh, if the righteous, if the righteous, as the Bible says, if the righteous scarcely be saved, well then where does that put you who are careless and godless? Where does that put you that couldn't care a whit whether the gospel is preached in Stafford today or not. In fact, we pro probably rather it wasn't. A nuisance to you, a folly to you. So where, where, I tell you, if the righteous, if those whom God has justified, those whom God has saved, if they scarcely be saved, where does that put you? I would suggest in a very, very dangerous place and condition of the Bible. Don't you know it's littered, littered with the confessions of men, you know, men who sinned against God, holy men of God who sinned, who got it wrong. So you see, friends, there, there, there's not a just man. There, there, there's not a single one that doeth good. None that doeth good, says God, and that sinneth not. All sin that comes short of the glory of God, and all do sin day after day, and come short of the glory of God. So my point is this, you see, the only, the only ever was one man who walked the face of this earth, who was perfect, who was just, who did good, and who did not sin, and his name was Jesus. And what did we do with him? You see, we hate good men. Eh? We say, you say you're good yourself. You know, you say I'm a good person, but you're not. You know you're not. Eh? But you get a good man. What do you do? You hate good men. You hate good men. Come on. Eh? You berate your politicians. You voted them off the map today because you hate them. Why? Because they're always lying to you. You say you want the truth told to you. But we come and tell you the truth. And what do you do? You berate us. You don't want the truth at all. You're liars to a man, to a woman. You don't want the truth. You don't want the truth told to you because the truth is too much for you. 
reality is too much for you to bear. You couldn't stand it. You couldn't take it. You live in a, you live in a bubble. You live in your own little bubble, your own little world, you know? Where you're perfect, you're right, you're truthful, and everybody else outside of your bubble, you know, is damn worthy. But not you. But not you, but I got news for you. Reality check, the Bible, check it out. There's not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. The only ever was one, Jesus Christ. Perfect in thought, perfect in word, perfect in action, perfect in attitude, perfect every which way. And you took it, you see, I wasn't there. You took him and nailed to a, to a cross. You see, I wasn't there. Remember, remember the old Negro spiritual song? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Answer, yes, 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 you were there. Berating him, howling, screaming at him, driving the nails into his hands and feet because you hated God manifest in the flesh with all the entirety of your being you spat on him and you drove the spear into his side yes you were there beneath the cross every one of you and every time every time you hear the gospel preached to you again and again and again and every time you walk by with indifference every time you reject it you drive the nails in again you drive the spear into his side again you crucify the son of god all over again and for that all oh, for that what will God do? What will God do to those who crucify his son over and over again? Who despise the apple of God's eye, the only good man, the only just man, the only man that sinned not upon this earth. And you took him and crucified him. What will God do to you? He'll damn you for all eternity unless you repent and believe the gospel. Unless you turn, you'll burn. Hell awaits you. Man, a, a godless man just, just a few moments ago walking by described it for you, the lava, pouring lava. He's got the idea, he's got the idea, flames that will never be quenched. I wonder, Stafford, I wonder you can't feel the heat already. I wonder you can't smell the sulfur already. The flames, the flames of hell are licking at the feet of your nation, of your town, of you. And they will burn for all eternity. Where the fire is never quenched. The worm never dies. Conscience that will gnaw at you for all eternity. Unquenchable. Everlasting torment. The loving Jesus. The loving Jesus. He, his description, not mine. The one who loved sinners was willing to come into this world and be abused and be crucified so that you can be forgiven for your lawlessness. So that you can be forgiven, pardoned, rec 
reconciled to God, not because you're able to keep his commandments, but because you're not able to keep them. No man is. There's not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not, not one. Jesus, his obedience, not yours. His dying, his suffering, and his rising from the dead. The only way, only way back to God from the dark path of sin. Justice. In that day when you stand before God, you're found trusting in your own righteousness. Like filthy rags, says God, you're in serious bother. You need to be found trusting in the righteousness of another. Jesus, his perfect righteousness revealed in the gospel, the good news. The Son of God, sent by his Father, who came and who obeyed, fulfilled all righteousness, lived and died, and arose mightily from the grave to justify, to make right lawless sinners, and to give unto them eternal life that they may never perish for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth those who believe only believers get saved only believers get an everlasting life only believers are reconciled to God only believers are reckoned righteous by God, only believers, that whosoever believeth should not perish in their sin, in the flames and damnation of hell, but have everlasting life. Will you have Jesus? Will you believe on his name? Believe, says God, commands all men believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and his assurance is thou shalt be saved. God now commandeth all men everywhere. It's not an invitation. It's a command. All men everywhere to repent. Except you repent, says Jesus, Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye. Believe the gospel. Son of God. His first recorded words in the New Testament. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Why? The kingdom of God is at hand. Stafford, that's you today, God's royal divine command. Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Do you like a copy of God's word? Check these things out for yourself and see that there is according to the word of God. There is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Not one. And so therefore not one that does not need the Savior, only Savior, Jesus Christ. The one of whom the Bible in its entirety testifies of. Jesus Christ. The only Lord and Savior. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word? It's offered to you freely. No cost, no obligation to you. You're simply for the taking. If you'd like one, you feel free to come and ask for one. 
May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious, never-dying soul.